Wonderful. Joy! Yes? Yes, Joy! Hi. Oh, how wonderful to hear you. First time caller, and I'm nervous. So. Well, don't be nervous, darling. Just relax. Right. What I was going to say, I agree with you about the war, actually. Mm. Um, we were the winners, but financially, we suffered the greatest loss. Yes. Because we picked up Germany's tag as well, I believe, didn't we? With the Americans. Yes. Um, but what I would be concerned about, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is what would have happened to our royal family? If Germany, if Hitler had actually won the war. Well, if it, you mean if Hitler had come over? Yes, if they'd have taken over England, um, because they got rid of the Kaiser years ago, didn't they? So what would have happened to our head of state? Well, they would probably just have retired them, I would think. Oh, well, that would have been very sad, wouldn't it? Because I'm a royalist. And um, I agree with you. Well, I would have, I would have found it extremely sad. But I mean, I don't think that that would have, uh, that would have actually happened anyway. Don't you, think you see, for instance, what I would have loved to have known is how close were we to doing a deal with Germany just before the war, before Hitler went into the Sudetenland. Mm, you see, I'm slightly biased because I mean, England went in to defend Poland, and my father was Polish, mm -hmm. and he was eternally grateful to the British. The Commonwealth for going in. Hello. Hello. And so I now get to live in this wonderful country. You see, I think I think what you speech. I think what you've got to watch in world politics is that you don't create the conditions which facilitates the rise of a dictator. That's the dangerous thing, that the conditions are created. And the conditions were created within Germany. I mean, the, the strange thing is that apart from the um, appalling carnage and, and the, the, the Holocaust and that sort of thing, Hitler started out doing what he did for what he saw to be the best reasons, things that would help the ordinary people, because Hitler came back as a corporal from the trenches of the First World War. He had been gassed, and I think he had been wounded. He'd certainly been gassed, and um, he, he had nothing. And he looked around, and he saw the um, Jews at the time in Germany controlling the money. Yeah, and he yeah. saw ordinary people starving in the street, rampant inflation in their monetary system. And he thought, something must be done. Action must be taken. And he wrote it all down in his book, Mein Kampf, My Struggle. And, uh, you know, it started off with, with you know, as, as we have a saying in Scotland, I don't know if you have it down here, the road to hell is paved with great intentions, you see? And that's what happened. His intentions, you know, weren't, um, you know, his intentions were for the best for the ordinary people. But his thinking was flawed. And his methodology was seriously flawed. Yeah? Yes, yes, I agree with and, you. And, and that's what had happened. But Hitler was only allowed to rise to power because the conditions had been created within his country. Yeah, yes? Funny. And in actual fact, the... The, the West, the, you know, the um, Allied powers also had a hand in that because of the way um, things were carved up after the First World War. 1919, the League of Nations. But the League of Nations, very well-meaning, weren't strong enough to stop the rise of Hitler, you see? And, and I, can I just say, I do, I do think we should remember the people that died, but so that we don't do it again. So it serves as a bit of history because of the tragedies that, that can be created. Yeah, but maybe it's time to cut that loose because, as somebody said, it's the pride that sometimes creates this. Well, yes, I can see that. Can you know, maybe it's time just to chill out and wear our leather jackets and, uh, and put our feet up and watch videos, you know, mm. and go into, you know, be cool Britannia. I don't think we can be, can we? No, I don't think so, because I think it's so deep-seated within our within British, British spirit. Yeah. And, and I mean, my father was Polish, so, I, you know, my mum was English, and it's even in me. So my mum was from Yorkshire, and it's at salt of the earth. So I've had a good dose of it. You know what I mean? You've got a bit of Paul in you, love. <clears throat> a bit of what? A bit of Paul in you. 
Wonderful. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're a wonderful race, the Polish race, Polish people. Some of them. We're all the same. It's good and bad in everyone. Good and bad in everyone, madam. Well, there's a lot of good in you and there's a lot of sense in you. So your mother and father made a great job of you and you're a credit to them. Thank you very much. That's what I say. Anyway, it's been lovely to talk to you. I'll have to go because we're out of time. Would you like to join me? This would be quite appropriate, since it's you, in saying good night and God bless to the nation. Good night and God bless, everyone. Good night and God bless, darling. Bye. Hey, dinky-doo. 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 What a nice lady. Right, sadly, folks, we are out of time, of course. Uh, back tomorrow night, 10 o'clock sharp. Until then, good night, God bless, dinky-doo, and ta la